For this unit's quiz, I would like you to be able to describe how a motor plan is carried out. I would like you to describe the corticospinal tract, including where it decusates. And I would also like you to compare and contrast the basal ganglia to the cerebellum. The reflex, which we've already studied a little bit, is a simple, unvarying, and unlearned response to stim uh, sensory stimuli such as touch, uh, pressure, and pain. You know, later on, we're actually going to learn a little bit different uh, ways through which the body processes information about pressure versus uh, touch and pain. But today, we're talking about really the, the top-down uh, uh, pathway. And uh, the reflex, in, you, for example, our iron example, showed that the brain is unnecessary for these sort of simple spinal reflexes that are the basic uh, unit of movement. A motor uh, plan, by contrast, involves the brain, or a motor program that would be a set of muscle commands established before an action occurs. And I mean, a lot of this would be through training of the basal ganglia and or possibly the cerebellum. Playing a musical instrument and golf, I think, are good examples of establishing a motor plan. Uh, you know, in athletics and in uh, even science, uh, performing scientific experiments, I think you, you'd find that most professionals that do these things say that they don't really think about them. Like an amateur golfer, for example, might uh, walk up to hit a shot and First, think what their hips are going to do, their feet are going to do, their arms are going to do, blah, blah, blah. This person isn't going to hit the ball very well. They look like me. Or someone playing the piano, you know, I have to sit down, okay, where is middle C? There it is. Where it is, where is G? Where does this hand go? You know, as a result, what I play is going to come out very choppy. Motor plans are very fluid, very determined. Uh, you know, the, the majority of the golf swing, for example, is determined uh, very early on in the backswing. Uh, everything that is going to occur is already sort of, hopefully, <laughs> if it's going to be a fluid swing, is going to be mapped out in the brain. Similarly with playing the piano, you know, or really or performing a scientific task. You know, you, 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 through habituation and probably the recruitment of the uh, dorsal uh, striatum, and the nigrostriatal uh, dopamine pathway, amongst other things, would be involved of the basal ganglia, would be involved in sort of training these muscle memories that really involve the brain quite a bit. The basic hierarchy of a primary motor plan would involve the you know, uh, primary motor cortex, or M1, which would output most of our motor commands. It receives a lot of input from the thalamus, in addition to the basal ganglia. Uh, and interestingly, the, the, the motor cortex is very much in phase with the basal ganglia, whereas the supplemental motor area is very much in phase with the cerebellum. And the cerebellum and basal ganglia would be very much involved in sort of the fine tuning of all this. But at the very basic level, you start with M1, the primary motor cortex, which is going to project down through that, uh, the track that we're about to describe. The brain stem would then integrate additional motor commands, then it would descend through the spinal cord until it gets to the skeletal muscular system, uh, which actually is what causes movement. Uh, but that is not going to occur without, of course, the brain input. The primary motor cortex initiates commands for actions. The non-primary motor cortex provides an additional source of motor commands acting indirectly via the primary motor cortex and through direct connections to lower levels of motor hierarchy. The cerebellum and basal ganglia modulate, act, uh, modulate activities of these control systems, sometimes via the thalamus in a loop back to the cortex. The corticospinal or pyramidal system, don't you love it when they have multiple names for all these? consists of neuronal cell bodies primarily in the primary metacortex, their axons which pass through the brain stem to the spinal cord, forming the corticospinal tract, which I tried to highlight there in yellow. This would then decusate in the medulla. Decusate means to cross. This is the primary reason that uh, you know, a, a stroke to this side of the brain is going to affect this side of the body. 
uh, it crosses in various places. And, uh, you know, it's very important to recognize where these things cross. The reason that this is so important is that it, uh, you know, is a neurologist, it's what they would look at if there was injury. They, they would want to know where the injury was that would allow them to understand the extent of the damage that you might get in this case in movement. In the case of the spinothalamic tract and the dorsal columns that we'll study later, you know, maybe you've lost sensation of vibration or pain in part of your body. And knowing exactly where that damage occurred and where that is in relation to where the decusation occurred is going to uh, in, be necessary to deduce exactly where the injury uh, will manifest. Now, we're not going to get into like where, like in grad school or med school classes, you, the, this will be a step higher. You'll have to know like, so if there was damage at C4, what does that mean? If there was damage at T3, what happens? You know, these sorts of things uh, would be that level of question. But for now, Let's just recognize what this pathway is and where it crosses. This one crosses in the medulla, uh, the majority of the uh, fibers do. Uh, and this would control most voluntary movement. The somatosensory cortex, which is right next to the M1 motor, primary motor cortex, both of these brain regions exist in what's known as a homunculus, so basically a map of the entire body. And some brain region or some body regions are represented more uh, than others. So, for example, the human, our face, our fingers, our thumb, you can see in that map, are very well represented. Whereas other regions that are quite large, like our back, you can barely see. Uh, you know, and you can test this using two-point discrimination. You know, try to find, uh, you know, put two points together blindly or have somebody else do it, put two pencils together and start moving them apart and see where you can sense and perceive that they are two separate dots. You would be able to do this quite easily on the hand, for example, but if somebody did it on your back, it would be, uh, you know, they would be able to get much further away, maybe like a whole inch versus a centimeter, for example. Another sort of fun fact here is that if you uh, look closely on there, uh, you, you'll find that the genital region is right next to the feet, which is a bit of, uh, you know, it could just be a coincidence, but there might be some anatomical overlap there in people that have foot fetishes. So for example, uh, they might uh, you know, have some sort of overlap in either the sensory or the motor cortex that could uh, you know, conflate genital and foot stimulation. Rex Ryan, for example. The pyramidal or corticospinal tract mediates most voluntary movements. Upper motor neurons, in the prefrontal gyrus, or the primary motor cortex, M1 in humans, have axons that travel down the corticospinal tract to command lower motor neurons in the spinal cord. Fibers descend through the midbrain in the cerebral peduncles, through the base of the pons, and through the medullary pyramids before they cross or decusate to the opposite side of the spinal cord, again at the level of the medulla, which form these little pyramid structures and sort of begin to resemble what looks like the cross sections of the spinal cord. And here, I'm gonna bring you through just a series of histological cross sections. So you can see what this actually looks like in real life versus a cartoon. These are cross sections from a human brain. And uh, you, know, you can actually see the highlighted fibers as they move down and then on the very final slide, cross. 